Should you ever polish your symbols? Or should you really never polish your symbols? This is a question we're going to try to answer today with a little bit of science and a whole lot of experience. Hey, what's up everybody? Thank you for tuning in to my channel. I uh, wanted to have a quick discussion about symbol polishing. Now, I will tell you, I know guys, especially in jazz, uh, who will straight up tell you, never ever, ever polish your symbols. Other people I've known will polish their symbols, you know, multiple times a year. Um, I think the truth is somewhere in the middle there. I think a good sound and a good longevity for symbols is, is, is in the mix there. Uh, but it, it's, it takes a, a little bit of knowledge about what we're actually talking about in order to make those correct decisions. Now, as you look at my drum set here, uh, this set of KZ hi-hats is an original pair of KZ 13-inch hi-hats from 1989, when the, when the series first started coming out. I want to say about 1989, around that era. My crash cymbal, also a Zildjian, same thing. Um, this... B8 Pro symbol, also an original B8 Pro when they first came out. I know how to maintain symbols. Now these other three symbols, these are Lion symbols, these are all made by either Wuhan back in the day or now they're called Dream. Same company, but these are disposable symbols. These don't last very long, so I haven't owned them for very long. I've replaced this symbol five, six times or more in my career. Those don't stay, but the rest do. So uh, let's talk a little bit about what are the arguments pro and con for polishing your symbol. One reason that people suggest that you shouldn't polish symbols is because you're going to weaken the symbols by taking material away from them and making them brittle in the process. Another argument against uh, polishing symbols is that the overall age and complexity of the symbol, the, the, the character of the symbol is being lost by removing all of this material. Uh, the age of the symbol should be uh, cherished, for better or worse. You know, old symbols do have a beautiful sound. So let's discuss what it is we're doing when we polish a symbol. First and foremost, I know a lot of guys, especially young cats, kind of equate polishing symbols with washing them, cleaning them, maintaining them. These two things could not be more different. Polishing is not a process like cleaning that should happen on a regular basis. Instead, polishing should be relatively rare and very thorough process that you do. I don't do these more than once every two or three years, or even more than that sometimes. Even for a touring musician that packs his stuff up all the time and moves from gig to gig, these symbols will get dirty with dust, grime, beer. I mean, it all depends on where you're, uh, where you're playing music. No judging here. Uh, but they get dirty. They get sticky. They get, you know, stuff all over them. And that's one process that can be cured by just simply grabbing a rag. I have a micro cloth that I use all the time. Wipe down the symbol. I usually put wipe down the symbols before they go on the stand. And usually right after they come off the stand, a quick polish. Not polish, but, you know, clean up. And that's fine. Now there's another process that has nothing to do with grit and grime that is very important that's happening to this symbol all the time. It's a process known as oxidization. Normally you'd hear the word rusting when you're talking about steel or something like that. Brasses, which are a combination of a bunch of different metals, brasses don't rust. However, they do tarnish and they do oxidize. Now what does that mean? In the atmosphere, there is oxygen. There's lots of chemicals, one of which is oxygen. Every once in a while, while oxygen normally pairs itself to another oxygen, O2 is the way you normally see oxygen written out uh, as, a, as its own freestanding molecule, sometimes, once in a while, um, oxygen unbinds from some chemical or another, and now you have a floating oxygen ion floating around, just can't wait to attach itself to some other chemical. And it does that. And it does that on the chemicals that make up the brass. And so when it hooks on, it changes the nature of that particular molecule, not the whole symbol, obviously. 
But that one little molecule way down in here, that molecule has now changed and is no longer a component of brass. And instead what it winds up being is sort of a gray, ashy kind of gray colored um, deposit that lays very, very thinly across the entire symbol. Now, when we're, when we're polishing a symbol, what we're doing here is we're removing that layer of oxidization to get back at this nice brass finish. This is where people think that one of two things is occurring. Either you're removing the fundamental nature of the sound of the symbol by removing that oxidization layer, which is an arguable point, or two, that you might be making it more brittle. Well, the oxidization process is what makes this symbol brittle. Polishing it is not going to make it any more brittle. There's an argument to be made, and it's, I, I would call it a little spurious, but there's an argument to be made that if you remove all the oxidization, then that gives the free oxygen in the atmosphere even more surface from which to work. That might be true, I guess, if you're, if you're doing it every six months or something like that, but even at that, it's the oxidization process that's causing this symbol to be brittle, not the polishing process. And unless you have, unless you have a gray symbol with literally nothing but an oxidized layer, necessarily there must be something that something else that can be oxidized. So I don't find that I don't find that argument very credible at all. What you now as for the character of the symbol? Well, okay, uh, you know you're talking about a, 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 a piece of metal and that piece of metal now has a covering over top of it. This piece of metal is meant to resonate. That oxidized layer was not built for any purposes and certainly not for resonation. So there's an argument to be made that adding that layer on there is going to dampen some of the symbol, going to take away some of the high end of the symbol. And if that's what you mean by building character, then that's fine. I would submit to you, though, if that's what you think of building character, the easier route would be to just buy a set of K Zildjian symbols as opposed to A symbols. So we have these differences in symbols now. We don't need to carefully curate every single instrument to be a K symbol. Uh, I'd rather have my A symbols sound like A symbols. And that's about all I can say. Uh, I've had these symbols for well over 20 years, and uh, they don't seem brittle in the least to me. Uh, there's not even any keyholing in this. Uh, so, polish your symbols? Yes. Polish your symbols every week? No.